the back of the book, Revelation chapter 13. Amen. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers once more. Amen. What a good time we're having. Praise God. Missing some people here tonight, but this is going to be one of those. Go back and watch it again. Amen. Revelation 13, I'm going to start in verse 11. Please say amen when you got it. Amen. Oh, Lord Jesus. Okay. Let's go. Revelation 13, verse 11 says, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Don't be fooled like he's coming like a savior, but he's really a dragon. Verse 12, and he exerciseth, exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him. That's the beast, antichrist beast system. That's, those are the governments of the world, the one world government. So he exercises all the power of that one and causeth all the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. So this Antichrist is saying to the people that he's deceiving on the earth, make an image. Make an image to this beast. In verse 15, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Today I want to talk to you about artificial intelligence and the Antichrist. Praise God. Let's pray that the Lord would help us here tonight with knowledge and revelation, that his will be done and that we be not deceived in Jesus' name. Come on, let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for your word here tonight. Father, I thank you for the body of Christ that is gathered here tonight to worship you, Lord. We do so in lifting up your name, Jesus, Lord God. For there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved, Lord. We praise that name. We honor that name here tonight. We lift you up, Lord God, as a bride prepared for her bridegroom, Lord. I pray, Lord God, that as we dive into your word, that you would release revelation, understanding, Lord God, knowledge and wisdom, oh God. Let every lie and deception of the enemy be put down tonight. But let the truth prevail that is able to make us free. Let it prevail tonight, Lord God, that your people should not be ignorant of his devices, but rather equipped to endure these end times. Have your way, Lord, and help me to preach, Lord God, and to teach under the unction of the Holy Ghost, Lord God, that I may speak to your people, Lord God, as an oracle of truth in these last days. Father, I love you tonight, Lord. We thank you for all that you are and all that you've done and surrender this service over to you praying that you would have your way. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Somebody shout amen to the Lord. Praise God. Amen. You may be seated. Artificial intelligence and the Antichrist. For a long time, I've been reading this, this story, not really a story, this depiction of the Antichrist in Revelation 13. This particular one always threw me for a loop. Uh, particularly uh, 14 and 15, I never really understood it until very recently. I feel like the Lord just kind of dropped this into my understanding. And that's how the Bible is. You can study it and study it and study it, and then just one day you get understanding. Um, you'll, get, or you'll get a revelation. This is why it's necessary to meditate on the Word of God and to really ponder and think about it. And, and doing so with the Spirit of God, you'll be able to rightly divide the Word of truth. And so we've got to talk about this because I see and am experiencing the world losing its ever-loving mind over what is coming around the corner. That is this artificial intelligence. Now, we are in a day and age that has never been seen before in mankind. We are living in a such, such a technologically advanced society that things are happening behind the scenes that you may not know about, but I want to expose it today. Uh, to tell you what the enemy's plan is. Never before have we had the capacity 
uh, to do what we can do with technology as we do today. It has never before uh, been possible. Now, I have a unique background in that I worked in this field. Uh, certifications and all, I did this. I was, in, I was a developer engineer, developer operations engineer. Just a year ago when I resigned, that was my title. And I worked for a software company uh, that was based out of Clearwater and later bought out by a bigger software company. And so I have a really intimate knowledge of what's actually happening behind the scenes. And, and I can tell you firsthand that, that the beast is, is forming as we speak. The beast is, it, it's forming, it's, it, it, is, it is coming together. And the idea of artificial intelligence has always uh, been like the pinnacle of technological advancement. It's something we've been working on and thinking about for centuries now. You know the movies, you've probably seen some of them. What if we could create something that could live and have its own sentience or being in it? And so it's always been a sci-fi movie topic, but it has never been reality, or the possibility of it has never really been achievable or within our grasps until just recently. And so why the change? Well, it's really been a systematic thing in that now, more than ever before, we have the data and the capacity to analyze that data and create what seems to be like intelligence. So what, what do you mean by data? Anybody got a phone? Pick up your phone and just kind of wave it at me. Everything you do on this device generates data. If I look at it and it turns on, it generates data. Every time I tap it, it generates data. It's a log in this phone. Every time you swipe, it generates data. Every time you enter in your passcode, it generates data. Amen. Every app that you open, it generates data. Every time you speak around your phone, it's listening. And it is generating data. Some of you can probably testify that you were talking about some shoes that you wanted. And then you opened up your email account. And you saw an advertisement for shoes in your email account. And you're like, how in the world did Google know that I was talking about shoes? Because they are listening. They, I say they, what is going to be the, the conspiracy theory, they. I don't know who they is, praise God, but they are listening. Amen. It, big brother, whatever, whatever you want to call it, the man, I, I don't. <laughs> Amen. Every time, every website you go to. They, they are listening. Every text message you send is being collected. Every phone call that you place, it is being collected. It is being listened to. It's, I don't care how secure you think you are, they got it. And I know that because in my training, I took white hat ethical hacking courses. Amen. Where they taught me how to hack into people's computers and turn on your webcam without you knowing about it. Oh, yeah, know how to do that and, and, and put viruses on your stuff. And, and, and usurp all of your information. I know how to hack your Wi-Fi. Praise God. <laughs> I know it's illegal, so, you know, not doing it to nobody. But I, I know that, I, you, know, if, you know, if you go to a coffee shop and use their Wi-Fi on a VPN, because I could be sitting right next to you looking at all of your Internet traffic, go back and forth and capturing that. Well, guess what? They have intermediate servers. Every time you go out and reach out to something, that stuff is being captured. And, and it's being saved. And it, that's never before been possible before. It's never been a, a, the capability to have all of your data collectively in one place. And not only, if, even if they could possibly store it all, Brother Reggie, they couldn't get at it quick enough to do anything with it. And file cabinets aren't going to do. You know, old school hard drives with the spinning disks are not going to do. So collectively, they've been introduced technology where the disks that they store it on now don't even have moving parts. It's just memory that can be asked, uh, accessed in the thousandth of a second. The thousandth of a second, it can get it that, that quickly. And it's all being aggregated. They call it the cloud. Anybody got cloud? Anything in here? You got an iCloud? Raise your hand. You got, you got the Google Cloud. You're right. You probably work for an organization that uses Microsoft Old 365, right? Which is just nothing but a cloud. A cloud is nothing but a fancy word for somebody else's computer. 
That's where you're putting your, it's somebody else's computer. And they've sold the idea. You don't have to have these big, huge, fancy computers and storage. Just store all of your stuff on the cloud. If you take a picture, that picture is stored on the cloud automatically. And it's got all the data that's necessary. It's got where you took it, when you took it. It has analyzed the faces in the picture and made correlation between those. It can tell you when, who was in the picture, who was, uh, it, it's got all of that. And they have not just yours, not just mine, but they have billions of people's data. Probably familiar with the megabyte. Praise God, that's, that's been the about back when you used to download MP3s. They were megabytes. And, then people started download movies and they're gigabytes, praise God. And you know, you can only store so much on your phone. You probably have a 64 gigabyte phone, which can hold all of your data that you need. All your bank records can be stored in that, all your pictures can be stored in that, all the videos you take can be stored in this one little device. And they have all of the exabytes. So what a, what is an exabyte? On well, a megabyte, it goes gigabyte, then it goes terabyte, then it goes petabyte, then it goes exabyte. Amen. That is, that is billions of items of storage that can be accessed at a moment and can be analyzed in a moment. And the whole reason why they do it is to predict you. Google knows you better than your spouses know you. Mm, here we go, Jesus. Microsoft knows you better than the preacher knows you. And you think, well, I deleted that. Nothing is deleted. Nothing is deleted. You send, what happened when you send a text? You think it goes right to the phone of the person you send it to? No, there's, there's four or five intermediate servers and routers that are going to usurp that, and they store copies of that. They, nothing is deleted. <laughs> Jesus. I'm about to delete my internet history. Google knows you, and it's to the point where they implemented it already in what they call the first introduction to artificial intelligence, which was social media. Zined. Every time, how many have ever been on TikTok before? Raise your hand if you've been on TikTok. A couple of people, a few people, you know what it is. Okay, I'll, for those of you who don't know, it's, it's, a, it's a short video site. And it shows you, it's like, I think, I don't know, like a couple of minutes, videos long, can only be like a couple of minutes, three minutes, something long, and you just swipe up. But you have no control over what you see. And their algorithm is so advanced that it uses what you looked at previously to show you your next selection. And it does it every time you swipe. It's dynamically finding what you like. And so what you do is, here's an AI word, you train it by every time that you view. It knows how long you viewed the video. It knows the how you liked on that. It knows the comment on it. Hello, somebody. It has an algorithm that looks at who was in the video, the types of creators that made the video, and uses all of that collectively. The more you use it, the more it knows you, which is why it is so addictive. They, it, it knows you because they want to program you. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. And we just willingly gave all of this data to Facebook for free in the name of social media. They didn't have to pay us for none of this, and they're making billions off of it. <laughs> Instagram got all your stuff. And there's just a few companies that own these, own these companies. It's not like these are separate companies and entities. They, they know this. They have it. Snapchat introducing all of this stuff. So this is the beginning of artificial intelligence. But something has changed recently. Something has changed. A few years ago, they started, they started to combine the ability to do predictive analysis in speech, speech recognition, and they found, they found a secret, that they could use the same studies that they did for speech recognition on everything and treat everything as a language. So robotics is a language, and mathematics is a language, and construction is a language. And so using those same techniques, they're able to now analyze stuff in such a, such a fast and predictive way that artificial intelligence is now able to predict future. People have been trading stocks with artificial intelligence, analyzing how stocks have moved and, and fashion and can predict which ones are going to go where. Google's been doing this to you for a long time. They want to predict what you're going to want next so they can sell it and use it for advertising. Amen. It's so scary to the point where they have taught the artificial intelligence to recognize most languages on the earth. 
it can analyze and find patterns. The company that I work for used it, and I, I deployed it, praise God. So I've seen some of the models, and they call them models because they train it on patterns that you generate. So it's trained on us, and they use these models to predict when anomalies would happen. So uh, the company I worked for was a healthcare identity company. And you know when you go to a hospital, you give everybody your information, okay? And so by law, they have to monitor that to make sure nobody accesses your information inappropriately because hospital systems are one of the main, main mediums for identity theft, okay? Because the nurses and doctors go in there and access your information uh, inappropriately and can steal all your identity. And so the software company that I work for monitored that to make sure nobody was doing that. And they use artificial intelligence based off of patterns to predict whether somebody's information had been stolen or not. And it is much more efficient than doing it the old school way to the point where we would sell many, many products just by using artificial intelligence. And if I analyze them, they called it machine learning, where the machine learns the patterns. All you do is you tell it what you want it to learn. Here's the problem with that. Software and technology industry is the most liberal place I have ever seen. It is run by LGBTQ people. You may not know this, but it is run. My software company that I work for, for employee, employee Appreciation Day, they sent me a coffee uh, tumbler, and on the tumbler was the LGBTQ flag and the trans flag with a little black square in the middle for Black Lives Matter. They sent that out to 3,000 some odd employees because that's who's running the show. Didn't know if you know that, but I come to expose it here today. And so now, because they have treated everything as a language model, this language model has gotten so good, it is able to improve itself. Probably heard something called ChatGPT. Anybody heard of that? Okay, that's, that's Microsoft's thing. It is so advanced and is advancing so fast that it can write programs for you. It can re do research papers for you. Jesus. It's, it's to the point where some, some universities are flipping out because they don't know how they can police. They can, who wrote it? Because it's not just going to spit out the same paper. It will write it in a way that sounds like you wrote it. Because you can give it your past work and it will form it in a way that looks and sounds like you wrote it. But artificial intelligence has generated this. And it's not just for text. They're doing so for, for voices now. Not only can it recognize speech, but it can replicate speech. Meaning that if you have enough content of your voice, it can make something sound just like you said it. Wow. Scary. There's something going on in, in Arizona. There's prank callers. What they're doing, they, they've gotten a hold of this technology. And they're pranking, excuse me, they're, they're, they're scamming people by calling them up and they play, a, a, they play an audio that sounds like their child has been kidnapped. And so they have what sounds like their child on the other end screaming and crying for help. And then the scammer says, put X amount of money in this Bitcoin account or you're never going to see your son or daughter again. And the parents, one lady flipped out because they happened to do it while her daughter was at cheer camp. And so she didn't know it could have been real. You know, and so she found, got, finally got to the bottom of it, what it was. There was enough of her daughter's voice out there on social media that they could replicate her voice and make it sound like anything they want to. Ooh. Yeah. But it doesn't stop there. They have something now that's called deep fakes. Because remember, every time you snap a picture, they, it's, they got it. Every video you have of yourself is out there. And so these algorithms can analyze it to where they can replicate it. So not only can they replicate your voice, they can replicate your image and make video that is fake. In 2018, Bloomberg ran a special with uh, one of the guys from Key and Peele. He was doing an Obama impression, and they took him out and put Obama's image and his voice in there, and it looked and sounded just like Obama. This was back in 2018. He's saying something, and they just replace it, and they call them deep fakes. So now we're to the point where artificial intelligence has increased, first of all, to the point where it's going to take many people's jobs. <laughs> but it's to the point where they are trying to replicate life. 
It is so bad that in the last few months, some of the biggest players in the space have sounded an alarm, saying, hold on, we need to stop. We need to stop and think about what we're doing. They've even taught it to program, where it can look at program and fix your program, what is wrong, all of the code. Millions of lines of code can be analyzed in seconds, and it can come and fix it, which means now, if it looked at its own code, it could approve itself. Mm, Jesus, Jesus. A guy from Google just, just, just resigned recently, talking about he didn't agree with the experiments that were happening, and that this thing that they were developing, he said, was starting to become sentient. Meaning that it, it has like a sense of life, like consciousness. It is starting to become sentient. Elon Musk, who has used a lot of the artificial intelligence, some of the stuff at Tesla and SpaceX, and he's sounding an alarm. We need to stop and think about because we could cross a road where there is no returning, where this thing could replicate itself, improve itself, and what do you think it's going to do to mankind? Hello, somebody which enters in our scripture. Because for a long time I've read this, and I thought to myself, what does it mean to give life to an image? And then it clicked, boom. That's the life it's going to give. Because now we are to a point where the enemy, in his attempt to be so much like God, wants to give life. Mm. But the problem is that the devil cannot create anything. He can't create anything. He's a mimicker. He's a copier. He copies God. Mark of the beast, that was God's idea. <laughs> Worship and praise and all that, that was God's idea. He's just a copycat. But you, you can create. You can multiply. This gives a deeper explanation of why he wanted them to eat that tree in the first place. Because my opening scripture says this, and verse 14, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, who's that? That's humanity, that they should make an image to the beast, which had the deadly wound by sword and did live, and had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. This is happening before our eyes. Uh, Brother Bill, if you could play that video, I want you to pay attention to this. Before you play it, this is, guy's name is Javal Noah Harari. He is a homosexual Jew. Uh, some of them are secular. Some of them are Jew just by culture, in case that threw you for a loop. And he is the chief advisor to the World Economic Forum. Um, play that if you could. This is a snippet of a speech he gave in 2018. Right. But control of data might enable human elites to do something even more radical than just build digital dictatorships. By hacking organisms, elites may gain the power to re-engineer the future of life itself. Because once you can hack something, you can usually also engineer it. And if indeed we succeed in hacking and engineering life, this will be not just the greatest revolution in the history of humanity. This will be the greatest revolution in biology since the very beginning of life four billion years ago. But this is now about to change. Science is replacing evolution by natural selection with evolution by intelligent design. Not the intelligent design of some god above the clouds, but our intelligent design mm. and the intelligent design of our clouds, the IBM cloud, the Microsoft cloud, these are the new driving forces of evolution. Mm. And at the same time, science may enable life after being confined to, for four billion years to the limited realm of organic compounds, science may ena enable life to break out into the inorganic realm. So after four billion years of organic life 
shaped by natural selection, we are entering the era of inorganic life shaped by intelligent design. This guy is speaking to global leaders at the World Economic Forum, saying that no longer are we going to do this natural biology determined by some god above the clouds. He said, but it's going to be our design based off of our cloud. <laughs> that iCloud that you got? And he said, for the first time, Life won't be confirmed to but conform to biology. We'll be able to have life in a different form. Technology. Hmm. So how is he going to give life to this image? Through technology. To where you will be able to have a relationship with technology. Snapchat is already trying this out. They have something called My AI, which can mimic your relationships and people that you talk to to sound like the person that you're talking to. To where you can't tell the difference. You don't know if you're talking to your friend on Snapchat or artificial intelligence. What do you think the metaverse was all about? Giving a form to that where you can interact with fake 3D generated images. And they can already generate an image. They can already generate video of you. They can already mimic your voice. So what's to stop you from falling in love with something that is fake? You can live out your wildest fantasies. Oh yeah, it's coming, it is disgusting. It is very sick. It is the highest form of bestiality. Mm -hmm. And it's happening. It's happening right before our eyes. Currently, Microsoft has released, and I know this, I'm on the engineering side, they have released something that's called Copilot, which is said to increase engineers' productivity that can help write code for the engineers. And so it is revolutionizing the development world because they can now create things faster than they ever could before, automatically correcting problems. Can analyze the maps and data on your phone to show you the best route that you can take. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Technology. And the thing is about it, don't mean to be the scare factor, but it knows who you are and, and where you are. It does. We'll say, I'm not on it. You are. You are. I'll give you a story. Uh, in my third year at, at my previous employer, our Wi-Fi system was horrible, so they tasked me with the responsibility of replacing the whole thing. So I had to spec it out and had to price everything out, and so they gave me a budget of $30,000 to replace Wi-Fi system. I know some of y'all are thinking, $30,000 for a Wi-Fi router? <laughs> when you have to cover a whole building, it costs a lot of money. And so we put access points up, and it was the newest and latest and greatest. And it had Bluetooth in it as well as Wi-Fi. And it could, it could analyze all the Bluetooth signals. I put 16 of these access points all over the two floors. And it could triangulate your position on those floors based off of the, blue, the strength of your Bluetooth signal and correlate that to the person that owned the device. So, I, so if somebody lied and said, I'm in the break room, or I'm at my desk when they're really at the break room, I could go on the system and see exactly where they were on our two floors based off of this Wi-Fi system and track them and say, no, they're not at their, they're not at the, they're, <laughs> they're in the break room or they're in the, they're in the bathroom and, and track you around. The same things are the cell phone towers triangulate your, your, your location. Your phone gives off geospatial location to where it probably knows where you're going to go before you know where you're going to go. Because again, it's not just analytical at this point. They have gotten it to where it is predictive and they are scared that it will gain sentience, what they call artificial general intelligence. Because right now it has to be prompted. You have to ask it to do something. You have to tell it to do something. But the time is coming where that image will take a life of itself. Now the whole issue with this is that it must be trained. 
Just like you train your child, it's got to be trained. But the problem is the people who are training. It's not good Jesus-loving church people that are training this AI model. Oh, help us, Holy Ghost. It is, it, 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 is, it is not the praisers and worshipers of the Most High God that are setting the parameters for this model to go into. It, it, it is the people that are vehemently against God and against Jesus that want nothing to do Jesus and want to shut you down. Those are the people that are setting the rules and the boundaries of this. And so it is going to prompt everyone to be against God and will cause as many. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. After it gives life to that image, that image is going to cause many to, to take the mark, to fall away, to come against the people of God. And it's happening right before our eyes. Right now, they're on chat GPT, I think, version number four, which they say has the, has the mental capacity of a teenager. It, GPT-3 went from a nine-year-old, and in just a year went to a teenager. GPT-5, they haven't released to the public yet because it's a fully grown adult at this point of its capability and can speak back to you in full grown sentences where you can't tell that a computer is talking to you, but it is. It is, it is actually a computer. Jesus. And the thing is, once the model is created, it can be replicated as much as you want it to. So there's some, there's some political trouble here because people are saying, well, what if Russia gets a hold of this and uses it to analyze military patterns and how can we take down America? What if China gets a hold of this and uses it to usurp authority and glo global economic finance? What if someone tells artificial intelligence to, to build a virus that can't be stopped or found and they inject it into the power grid of the United States of America? Mm, hello. But can you think of all the uses? If you had God-like power and the light bulb went off at that statement, because I remember something in Genesis chapter 3 where the devil said, you shall not surely die, but he said, you shall be like God, knowing both good and evil. And this is my message here tonight. Artificial intelligence is the culmination of that stolen knowledge. It is the culmination, which is why he needs humanity to do it. Because we've got that knowledge, and we've got the ability to create. We've got the ability to multiply. That's why the beast causes them that dwell on the earth to make the image. He can't do it. It's not by himself. He's trying to be like Christ in every way, including the ability to give life. Now, I don't think, based off of the timeline that I can see in the Bible, that we'll be here to see this in, in fruition. Based off of by the time he's good and revealed, we should be up in glory, hallelujah. singing hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord our God. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. But mark my words, there are going to be lots of test cases run at us because they already, got, they already know us. He knows us. He knows he's well known. You know how I know he knows? Because in COVID, we put all of our sermons online. <laughs> he's got lots of material to analyze. <laughs> we put them all online and say, here, figure us out. Oh, Jesus. Oh, yes. But his end is coming soon. Last scripture I'll read for you today. I told you it wasn't going to be long. Revelation, excuse me, Daniel chapter 2, verse 44 to 45. We really are living in some crazy times. Daniel chapter 2, verse 44, 45. Get the pages turning, so I'll read. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms. And it shall stand forever. 
For as much as you saw that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it should break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. And the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof sure. This is not the first time man has tried to be like God. They tried to do it during the times of Noah to create this hybrid being with the sons of God coming into the daughters of men and making these Nephilim, these world-renowned men. But God said, I don't like it. I'm shutting it down. I'm flooding the earth. And then after that, he tried to work through a wicked king by the name of Nimrod to come together and to build a tower. Come on, y'all know it. Whose top can reach to heaven. And the Lord said, if I don't get down there and stop this, they're going to achieve that. So we came down there and confined their language. Isn't it something that it was the language model that's in, uh, uh, propelling this AI? <laughs> oh, God said, no, I'm not going to allow it. And he's trying it again. That, that image with the head of gold and the, the chest of silver and the torso of bronze and then the legs of iron and finally the feet of iron clay, which represents all the nations coming together. Daniel said, this beast is different than the rest of the one. It's more diverse than the rest of the one. It'll trample on anybody that's in his past. But there was a stone that was cut out of the mountain without hands. It was the same stone that Jacob laid his head on. Praise God. Oh, it was the same rock that Moses smote in the wilderness and water came up out of it. Praise God. I think it was one of the stones that David had in his pouch and hit Goliath right in the head with it. Praise God. It was that stone that was rejected of you builders that has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is only one name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. That stone is Jesus Christ. And Daniel said, I saw it cut out of a mountain without hands, and it struck that image right in the feet and when it struck it in the feet the feet couldn't stand anymore and the iron legs had to buckle and the hip was out of place praise God and the torso had to break up and the arms had to fall off and finally that head of gold that old city great Babylon the whore the prostitute the persecutor drunk off the blood of the saints of the living God that head had to crumble and fall to the ground and Daniel said that stone became as a great mountain and a kingdom that shall never be destroyed saints of God it may look bleak right now but just hold on to your salvation because our God is coming back to fight that devil with a vengeance and to lock him up and throw him into the lake of fire. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. So what do we do about this? Well, should I just get off of all technology altogether? It's too late. <laughs> Go ahead and use your, look, I'm preaching today from, from a, from one of those devices <laughs> with, 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 with the bite taken out of it. Praise God. It's it, it been telling us the whole time, Brother John, who's really running this show right here and what the whole purpose of this is. <laughs> Brother Jeff Arnold calls them the Antichrist devices. <laughs> so, <laughs> just, you know, and, and don't get me wrong. We're, we're, it's either the Apple or the Android. Praise God. <laughs> Which is, if you know what an Android is, it's a mix of human and technology. That's what... <laughs> That's what an Android is. So no matter which way that you go, praise God, it's all playing into the same hand. Y'all just going to get away. It is what it is. Praise God. You ain't got nothing to hide. You ain't got nothing to worry about anyway. Praise God. Amen. Uh, like I said, like, like it or not, you know, TikTok received a lot of flack because they said, well, China's got it. And they're going to use it to, you know, to, to, to spy on Americans. I'm like, that's true, maybe. But the NSA been spying on Americans. <laughs> <laughs> they have whole data centers with nothing but your information on it. And that started during 9-11. This whole thing has been an orchestration, y'all. It's been an orchestration to get us to a point where that artificial life, that artificial intelligence, and there's going to come a day when those who knew not the testimony of Jesus Christ, when those who love not the truth, God said to send them strong delusion. There's going to come a day where they will be so fooled and deceived that they will believe that artificial intelligence That life form, like this homosexual Jew, who you all know Harari said, they said that we're, gonna, we're breaking out of biological life. 
going into technological life. He even said in one speech that you will be able to exist in the cloud. They want to transfer your conscience into the cloud. Wonder where the devil got that idea from. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, where the trumpet shall sound. Hello, y'all know. We're going to be called out to be with the Lord. We shall be changed. First Thessalonians 4 said, we shall meet him in the... Ah! <laughs> Amen. His end is coming soon. Hold on to your salvation. Things are going to get very trippy. Things are going to get very suspect. You're going to see lots of things break out. And its first mission is going to be to come against the church of the living God. That's going to be. That's why Jesus said, he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Amen. Amen. Let's stand here tonight. Praise God. I'm done. Mm. Help us, help us, Lord. Help us, help us, Lord. Help us, help us, Lord. And as much as we can see these things unfolding, there is nothing that can replace the life of the Holy Ghost. He can't do it. He's going to try to mimic it, but he's not able to do it. And so I pray that we let this light we have shine. So we can tell people, don't worship God of technology, but come and get the real life. Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No, man. There's not nothing artificial about this. Praise God. I know that might say speaking in tongues is fake. Uh, the devil is a liar. Praise God. This is the real life. Thank you, Jesus. Man, let's pray here tonight that the Lord would help us to endure in these last days. That we would not waver, but that we would stay steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Come on, let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus, oh God, I thank you tonight, Lord Jesus, that you've given us this revelation, Lord, that you have opened up our eyes and opened up our ears, Lord God, that we should have understanding of these end times, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, for calling us right here in this generation, Lord. And we know, Lord Jesus, that if you've called us to the kingdom for such a time as this, Lord, you have anointed us, oh God, to defeat the enemy, Lord. You have anointed us, Lord God, to endure, to, to persevere, Lord Jesus. You've matched us, Lord, uh, with the right time in the right place, Lord. And I pray more now than ever before, Lord God, that we will not descend into the abyss of idolatry through technology, Lord God, but we would stay steadfast, Lord God, upon your word, steadfast upon the doctrine, Lord Jesus, Lord God. As much as the world goes into technology, Lord, let us dive in the spirit, Lord God. As many miracles as they want to produce, oh God, through natural means, Lord, uh, release your miracle, Lord God, uh, in the church, Lord Jesus, oh God. Uh, as dark as it gets out in the world, Lord God, I pray right now uh, that our light would shine so bright, oh God, uh, that people would take notice upon every place, Lord, uh, upon every community, Lord God, uh, upon every city and state, Lord God, that there is a true church uh, that is standing upon the foundation of the apostles uh, and the prophets with you, Lord, uh, as the cornerstone, Lord God, uh, for you are our foundation, Lord. Lord Jesus, oh God. Father, we declare tonight that we will not waver. We will not back down. Lord, and I speak to this atmosphere tonight to put the enemy on to notice that he is a liar and the father of all lies, that he cannot create. He is a mimicker. And anything that he tries to create is false. God, but I declare today, oh God, that we are the people of the truth, Lord God. And the truth has set us free, Lord. So I pray, Lord God, Help us, Lord God, to evangelize this world, Lord. Help us, Lord God, to proclaim your name everywhere, oh God, that we go. That people might be saved by your blood that was shed. And through the Spirit poured out, Lord God. Oh God, let's have a revival, Lord, in these last days. Where people can experience a true life, abundant life, Lord God. Where people can experience true deliverance, Lord God. True relationship with you. And not some fake, Lord God, control. Tribe experience uh, by the devil himself. 
We declare we will not eat of that fruit. We will eat of the tree of life and live everlasting life with you, Jesus Christ. Lord, anoint us, O God. Bless us, O God. Go before us and level our enemies, Lord God. O God, and give us victory, Lord God, upon every side, Lord God. We'll be careful, Lord God, to praise you, to lift you up, to give you all the glory, all the honor that is due to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody ought to shout amen to the Lord. Come on and clap your hands to the Lord here tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Amen. You're dismissed here tonight. We're still going to sing a couple of songs, but you're free, free to go. Thank you, Jesus. Don't, don't say I preached too long in Jesus' name. What was that, 15 minutes? Yeah.